Welcome back to another FPL team selection, this time out of Gimmick 36. I activated the wildcard last week, and the plan is to bench boost in double Gimmick 37. There's no other option. That's what the plan was from the get-go. I'll be talking about how I'm going to optimize that chip, and also what I'm going to do with Edison, who I bought on the wildcard and is currently an injury doubt. But I'll provide the latest updates on him and talk about everything else you need to know out of Gimmick 36. Smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to over 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25,000 subscribers. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, and check out Patreon, the channel memberships by clicking the join button and getting access to a lot of perks like early access to my videos. Join the Discord server, the FPL League, FPL Challenge. Check out Draft Time, which is very useful in FPL and check out Spotify and Amazon Music. Leave a five-star review on my podcast. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. Without further ado, Let's jump straight into it. During halftime of Man City's 2-0 win against Nottingham Forest, Edison was subbed out due to an injury. And after the game, he was seen in a sling. And Pep Guardiola said the injury doesn't look too good. But further scans have actually revealed the injury isn't too serious. And the evening news, the Manchester evening news, have reported that it's not going to be a significant injury. And he could be back for games against Fulham, Tottenham and West Ham for Gimmick 37 and 38. And this is what they say. There is no desire to rush Edison back with Ortega impressing as his deputy this season. And the German is likely to continue in goal for the visit of Wolves at the Etihad this weekend. So it looks like Ortega is a great option for this week only, but he might not be for double Gimmick 37 and 38. That'll be a very interesting case to monitor. And I'll talk about Ortega very soon. But Edison was very disappointing as Man City went on to keep a clean sheet and Gavardio, who I was very close to buying, got 15 points. And I still think with any Man City defender, including the Croatian, you could see some rotation in double gimmick 37 or in at least one game that is remaining for Manchester City. They've got four matches left. I don't see any Man City defender starting every single one of them. And even if that was the case, it's very difficult choosing the right one who's going to start every single match because rotation is inevitable with Pep Guardiola and the defensive line. My current picks would be Gavardio and Walker. Pick your poison. Ultimately, I went for Edison for the safety of minutes and that transfer on the wildcard has completely flopped. My entire defensive line was pretty awful this week. Harry Maguire was on course for a seven-pointer. He was on for a bonus point and a clean sheet against Burnley. But in the 88th minute, Burnley got a penalty and tucked it away to secure a 1-1 draw at Old Trafford. I also had Dallow on my bench and I picked Maguire. It looked like a decent decision, actually. Dallow was on course for six points whilst Maguire had seven. But in the end, both of them blanked. And I don't like doubling up on Man United defensively. Anan is the best way of covering their defence in general. But because I wanted Edison, that meant I dropped Anana, And that also started a chain reaction, not going for Gavardio. And missing out on quite a lot of points in the process. But Maguire is a decent option at that price. Until the likes of Lissandra Martinez and Varane return. Which could be for double gimmick phase 7. But that isn't set in stone right now. My second defender is Dan Byrne. And he got two points against Sheffield United. As Newcastle went went behind but ultimately won 5-1 and scored 13 goals across both games against Sheffield United to secure their relegation and that's a record of so many goals being scored against a certain club within a Premier League season. Newcastle have broken that by scoring 13 against Sheffield United but Dan Byrne with nothing whatsoever and those went for Fabian Scher. Very unfortunate but in my opinion he's worth holding on to as I discuss in the Transtips video and podcast. The final defender is Pedro Porro, who still has one match left against Chelsea away and he got a one point against Arsenal as Spurs went 3-0 down at half time and Bodro created one great chance for Hyun Ming Son who skied it over but the attacking potential is always there. Those that went for Romero though were rewarded as he was Spurs' best player and he carried them through that game scoring the first goal capitalising on a David Raya error and if you were to go for two Spurs defenders then Bodro and Romero are definitely your picks. I still prefer the Spaniard but I have to say the Argentine could be a decent differential especially if he plays that way like he did in the North London derby for the rest of the season. As usual, my midfield was much better than my defensive line and Bruno Fernandes got two bonus points despite no goals or assists for the Portuguese international and he has been incredible in the last month. He's carrying Manchester United. That's another nine key passes in that game against Burnley just like he did against Sheffield United in the game week before and the FA Cup semi-final against Coventry. Three shots, 
all big chances created and he really should have walked away with more points than four but at least he got something to reward his efforts and his incredible performance against Burnley the second midfielder is Cole Palmer the only one to have blanked in this position up until now he still has that second game left against Tottenham and he did very well in the reverse fixture but it's a very difficult game to judge because Spurs did go down to 10 men and then ultimately to nine men at the very end of that game but I think Jackson could definitely be a nice differential as we speak about later on in this team review the third midfielder was Anthony Gordon it was a home game so guess what he got attack and returns and another double digit haul now he didn't really get too many this season at the beginning but he's really starting to step up now with two or three goal contributions per home match away from home I don't trust him whatsoever but he is facing Burnley away next and he has a good record against newly promoted clubs and his only double digit haul away from home came against Chef United so maybe he can do something similar against Burnley in gimmick 36 and the final midfielder is Huming Son who was completely anonymous in that North London derby but he got that penalty after Declan Rice conceded it it was a poor error on his part and I think it all came from that David Ryan mistake he put Arsenal under tremendous pressure which they didn't need to when they were 3-0 up I think Spurs should have scored goals beforehand but after Arsenal scored that first goal and then scored that second they were in complete control of that match they lost it due to the errors but Huming Son is always a great FPL option he's on penalties he's also Spurs' most clinical player player and one of the most clinical players in the Premier League so he could do really well in the second game against Chelsea and those that have captain Son are so far winning but let's see what happens in that big match on Thursday between Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur. Originally I started Phil Foden against Nottingham Forest but he was left out of the squad due to illness and Erling Haaland was on the bench but he came off and scored that winner, that second goal to kill off the game and Nottingham Forest really should have scored a few goals. Chris Wood missed an open goal and he didn't even hit the ball. I mean I don't know how he even managed to achieve that and then you have Murillo hitting the crossbar but Man City got the job done, they played poorly, probably deserved to draw or lose and Erling Haaland is clinical on his day and it was a great finish on his part and Man City are in incredible form since the beginning of December. 19 Premier League games unbeaten and they needed that sort of run to eclipse the likes of Liverpool and potentially Arsenal for the last few games of the season. The second forward is the famous old Nicholas Jackson who we all love to be honest. He scored against Aston Villa but it was ruled offside and I should have known at that moment you can't enjoy things when you own Nicholas Jackson but Hopefully he can do well in the second game against Tottenham. He scored four goals against them in the reverse fixture. And if he could do anything remotely close to that, I'd be a very happy man indeed. The final forward was Isak. He is someone that you can't really debate right now. Another brace, 13 points. Player of the match against Sheffield United. I mean, he has been incredible in the last month or two. I did own him at this time last season and going for him over Callum Wilson was really detrimental to my season. But this time around, Callum Wilson is now back in the equation. He's coming off the bench and scoring, but Isak is the main striker for Newcastle. And for me, he's the best forward in FPL right now alongside Ollie Watkins. I went for the template captaincy pick of Cole Palmer and the only players to have blanked in my team in Gimmick 35 so far are my Chelsea players and Pedro Porro. And it's worth mentioning, by the way, I did start Petrovic, but I wanted to highlight Edison and his injury. And Edison was going to be my starting goalkeeper for the rest of the season. And now I might need to make a goalkeeper transfer. But that's 52 points up until this point of the game week with that first day clash between Chelsea and Tottenham yet to go. And 2,142 points overall. And my rank has gone up ever so slightly by a few thousand places. But I would expect that green arrow to increase quite significantly, maybe to around 160k. But Gemic 37 is the big one. That's where I could potentially creep into the top 100k for the first time this season. Let's now head over to the team selection portion of this video for Gemic 36 where I might well make a goalkeeper move. This is certainly not set in stone and using FPL.team later I'll discuss the possibility of rolling and what that could mean for my transfer plans in double Gemic 37 but I could replace Edison directly with Ortega. I think that could be a good move for Gemic 36 but not so much for double Gemic 37 or 38 but really it's Gimmick 37 that I'm really focused on. I'm not too bothered about having a Man City defensive coverage against West Ham in the last game of the season but to be honest I would concede I think Man City keep a clean sheet in that game so 
My preference would be to get Gavardio or Walker in the defensive line, but I think rotation could be a problem for every Man City defender regardless, as I talked about earlier in this video and podcast. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Would you buy Ortega for those that own Edison? My current inclination is to do it, but as I'll show you later on, for a lot of Gimmick 35 wildcarders, the best play might be to roll in Gimmick 36. My defensive line doesn't look great on paper. I'm going to start one of Maguire or Dallow away to Crystal Palace and the Eagles have been in great form and over the last couple of seasons they have caused Man United all sorts of problems so I think they'll score in this game and I'm not expecting much from Maguire or Dallow and that's why maybe going for Nana in goal and starting one of him or Petrovic might have been better and going for Gavardio at home to Wolves but ultimately we're all covering the same teams defensively and it comes down to some 50-50 calls and fine margins. My second defender is Dan Byrne away to Burnley and because it's an away fixture and Newcastle tend to struggle on their travels I think Burnley will score in this game but you never know I still think Newcastle won't concede more than one goal but football and the Premier League is full of surprises. My final defender is Gabriel at home to Bournemouth. This is the first time I've started Gabriel all season because I bought him in Gameweek 35 and before that I had Saliba from Gameweek 1 and a home fixture against Bournemouth looks good on paper but Bournemouth I believe are fifth in the Premier League table since November and they're in great form. That's back-to-back -back victories including a 3-0 thrashing of Brighton and Hove Albion. So Arsenal can't underestimate Bournemouth. It's going to be a tough game and a clean sheet isn't locked in but Arsenal have the best defence in the league and that's what's brought them to this point of the season. They've also scored the most goals and Gabriel is still a great FPL option. With the nature of the wild card and looking to bench boost in Gimmick 37, I have some tough decisions to make in terms of benching an attacker, but Bruno Fernandes on his current form and not be dropped. I know Man United are inconsistent and they're away from home against Crystal Palace. They could well lose this game, but Bruno Fernandes has to start in every single match. Even for Gimmick 38, where I'm considering Bruno Fernandes to Saka as my last transfer for the season, I might even not do that move in the end because of how well Bruno Fernandes is playing and he has a great record against Brighton, who are really struggling at this moment in time. My second midfielder is Phil Foden at home to Wolves. He missed out due to illness against Nottingham Forest. He should be back against Wolves. And as I discussed in the Trans Tips video and podcast, for me, Foden remains a buy. His price went up overnight and I think he's well worth the money. He's the best Man City asset period, even over Kevin De Bruyne in his impeccable form as well. Now, moving on to the other midfielders, Anthony Gordon away to Burnley. My original plan was to bench him, but I'll discuss later on why I'm looking to start him in particular, because I don't trust him away from home, but because he's facing a newly promoted club and Burnley have been leaking chances all season, I think this could be one of the few occasions where Gordon delivers away from home. To complete this midfield, I've got Cole Palmer at home to West Ham. He's a good captaincy option and West Ham have been leaking chances and goals in the last few months and I think Chelsea could score a few goals here and it could be a high scoring London derby. And finally, Hyun Ming Son away to Liverpool. I know on paper that looks like a really tough game but Liverpool have been so suspect at the back especially in recent times and their title hopes have been derailed and it all started from the Man United games in the FA Cup and the Premier League. I think Huming Son is the perfect type of player to face Liverpool right now on the counter-attack. If Spurs play that sort of way, Huming Son could find himself with a lot of opportunities and a few goals in the process. So it's a good midfield five, very solid. I think Anthony Gordon is the only kind of risky pick because of his away record, but I think the fixture compensates for that and he could deliver in Gemic 36. I'm going for a 3-5-2 and of course Erling Haaland starts at home to Wolves. He'll be a very template captaincy pick and he could well deliver. He has been quite good recently. He had a few injury problems which kind of maybe stopped the momentum but he scored against Crystal Palace. He scored against Luton Town and against Nottingham Forest off the bench. So you have to say his current form is much better than what we saw earlier this season where he had some rough patches and he missed so many big chances. That could still happen of course but I would back him to score against Wolverhampton Wanderers who will be without their manager. Gary O'Neill. I have to say the timing of that is very suspect, but there's no point dwelling on that in FPL terms. Just expect the points and the goals to flood in for Manchester City. My final player is Isak. And yes, the main reason why I'm starting Gordon right now is to bench Jackson at home to West Ham, but it's between those two for that final 
player in my starting 11. Isak is locked in away to Burnley, home and away. He can do extremely well, but it's worth mentioning that Newcastle in general are much better at St. James's Park compared to the away fixtures, that's for sure. So now let's talk about the captaincy and my bench, and then later on, I'll talk about Draft Town and FPL.team to discuss a few different talking points and alternative moves that I could well do. I currently have the likes of Petrovic, Jackson, Dallo, and Bedro Borro on my bench. I think the order is also spot on. So either Gordon or Jackson will be first on my bench and I've got Petrovic in there. That makes complete sense. But if I were to roll the transfer, it would be Petrovic in goal at home to West Ham and Edison would be my backup goalkeeper. Then going into double gimmick phase seven, I would have two free transfers. So I think that pretty much speaks for itself. And it's only one 50-50 call with the team selection with that eighth attacker. But in terms of the captaincy, I'm currently favouring Foden, who did miss out in Gimmick 35. But I think if he starts against Wolves, he has a very high ceiling. And for me, Foden and De Bruyne are great options for the captaincy in this game week. Palmer's my vice. Any other options I consider would probably go between Haaland, Son and Isak. But I'm going to keep it simple, I think, and limit it to three players. Foden, Palmer and Haaland. And right now, I'm going for the player of the season. It looks like he's going to win it. And I think Phil Foden could deliver yet again. He has been clutch for Manchester City this season. And I'm expecting him to do more of that for the last four games that they have left. Let's now go to Draft Town. There's a link in the description below. I would highly recommend you check it out. And many of you are signing up using my link and talking about how useful that resource is. It's a great website. I've been using it since the summer. And let's see what they suggest for my transfer plans. Despite the lack of doubles, the draft and algorithm really favours Arsenal and they recommend selling the likes of Son and Pedro Porro to Odegaard and Ben White. And I could make similar moves in Gemic 38, like I mentioned Bruno Fernandes to Saka, but because of that double in 37 and Arsenal facing Man United away in that game week, I don't think I'm going to go for a second or third Arsenal player just yet, but I would definitely be open to that for Gemic 38 with that home fixture against Everton, which could potentially seal their 14th Premier League title. So some good suggestions by Draft Town, but I have to say, I think either rolling or making a goalkeeper transfer is where my head's at. And in terms of their optimization tool, they recommend Gabriel in for Pedro Borro and Foden as the captain and Palmer as the vice. So pretty much they agree with what I've gone for and Erling Haaland's points will be updated very soon. So don't worry about that. That's the good thing about Draft Town. Based on injury updates, they update this regularly, pretty much daily. And Haaland will come back into the starting 11, as you'll see by the time we get to the deadline stream on Friday and if we're looking at a player to miss out I think they'll probably agree with me and put Jackson on the bench another 50-50 call by the way is Maguire or Dallow there's literally not much in it but Maguire's been in better form and I think for bonus points he might even be slightly better I think Dallow hasn't really been playing well recently whilst Maguire has had a few goals in him and he's also been playing better in general for the bonus point system so let's now go to team and let's see how my team would look like if I roll the transfer in Gemic 36. Between the sticks, it would be Petrovic, and I'll have Dan Byrne, Gabriel Maguire. The starting level will be the exact same as I've discussed. There's a few 50-50 calls, which of course I'll talk about in the deadline stream. But let's now go to game week 37, which is the most important thing. So if I were to roll the transfer, having two for double game week 37, I could then buy a Nana or Edison and buy Gvardiol for one of Maguire or Diogo Dallo. I could even replace Gabriel and go for 15 double gimmick players if I wanted to, but I would like Gabriel for gimmick 38 at home to Everton and also for the home fixture against Bournemouth this week. So Gabriel won't be sold anytime soon. If I were to make that transfer, it would be in double gimmick 37, but I might incur a minus four hit if I also wanted to bring in Bakayo Saka for the final gimmick of the season. And that's my current plan to sell Bruno Fernandes to Saka in gimmick 38. Let me know if you like these transfer plans better than what I discussed throughout most of this video and podcast. And a lot of 50-50 calls are basically going to decide our final ranks and there's not much in it. We're all going for the same team teams piling up on similar players but going for Anana or Maguire going for Gavardi or Edison all of this can result in massive swings as we saw in double gimmick 35 up until this point and of course we have one game left on the Thursday thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast if you enjoyed it or found it useful then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new let's try to get this video to the 200 likes and let's keep on pushing towards 25,000 subscribers and beyond you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the other links in the description below for the Patron, Championships Discord server, the FPL League, FPL Challenge, Draft Hound, as well as Spotify, 
and Amazon Music, leave a five-star review on my podcast. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. I wish you all the best of luck for Double Gimmick 35, 36, and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.